Okay guys, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker Part 9. Last time we explored some of Dragon Roost Island, met some of its inhabitants, and uh, we are um, trying to help Medley here figure out what Valu's problem is, and that's precisely what we're doing right now. And uh, yeah, this time I'm actually starting a brand new recording session. <laughs> So I've got myself a brand new bottle of water. I'm not no longer doing it the same day I did the past eight episodes, so my voice is fine and fresh and ready for some new episodes. So let's have at it, shall we? Mm. I could use a few tasty bacoblin beatings every now and then. I do believe there was a key in here. And uh this is when we get to figure out, well actually I think we already did this earlier, but um, one of the things I really liked about Wind Waker that they never brought back for whatever reason is that you can actually still, bleh, <laughs> it just went out right as soon as I got to the torch, what the flip game, is that you can actually carry enemy weapons as soon as you beat them up, and not that it's a big thing or anything, but there's something about that I really liked, and it, they never brought it back for some reason. I mean, they kind of did in Skyward Sword with one of the boss fights, but that was about it. So, I, I don't know, I always feel like there's a bunch of features that came out in this game that they never thought of bringing back again for whatever reason. And yeah. And now we are in the main spiel of our first real dungeon. Forsaken Fortress doesn't count, shut up. So, that, let's investigate the area a little bit. That door is apparently locked, so we can't do anything about that yet. It appears we need to make use of this block to create us a bridge and make our way over to the other side. And yeah. few little pieces surrounding the bridge, nothing too uh, dangerous or anything. In fact, I don't even think they can um, knock you back into the lava, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. So. Yeah, pretty simple puzzles so far, but uh, soon enough we will be running into some puzzles that even um, some of the past Zelda games haven't even used at that point in time. So, like this, for example. We need to make use of these um, water-based things quite a bit in the dungeon in order to um, make our way through certain lava sections. And we're going to uh, um, have to make even further use of that as we delve deeper into the dungeon by actually putting it on top of um, areas where lava will suddenly guise out like a geyser or something, so... Or rise up like a geyser, I don't know. But I should have used and according to with that term or whatever, but who cares? Oh. <sighs> oh. <laughs> the choo choo almost hit me. What the fuck? What is that doing up there? And it appears from here we need to find a way of breaking these things because our sword cannot do the task alone. So what we need to do is actually steal this guy's uh, weapon and break uh, barriers with it. I mean, there's a few puzzles where you'll need to use an enemy's weapon in order to proceed, but there's not going to be very many um, instances like that. More only just breaking down stuff or lighting torches. That's about it. But. Nonetheless. Oh. And I do believe we have a small key in this treasure chest. In fact, I think this is the first um, dungeon that has keys. Kind of thing that does. I don't remember Forsaken Fortress having any, so they work the same as all the other Zelda games do. They unlock locked doors, and that's really just about it. Now, another feature that is um, unique to Wind Waker are these little orbs that enemies will spawn sometimes after they're defeated. You break them, and they bring out crap loads of stuff, and normally whenever you beat um, bigger enemies like uh, Moblins and such later, they actually have a lot more spoils and stuff coming out of them, so 
and I think the um, the chances of them doing that with the whole orb thing will happen a lot more often. So. Yeah. I don't think these skulls uh, spawn as many um, spoils as much as like bases or any other things do. Now, we are going to need to come back to this area a little bit later because there happens to be a treasure chart on the other side of this abyss. Oh god, almost fell down. And uh... Did I say what was in that treasure chest? If I did or didn't, I, it's a treasure chart and we will definitely be needing that. Brain for a moment for the win. And I do believe this is a really good spot for grinding on red chew jelly. It's not that I'll really be using it except for tearing off what they do a little bit later on, but nonetheless. Should have died. There. There we go. I do believe there is a switch right here with, with which we can open this door with. And that's all. And there are a few outside areas like the, this. And uh, be careful not to break that bridge. Because if you do cut enough of the ropes, that bridge will fall down and you will fall to your doom. Doesn't do too much damage, but figured I'd point that out anyway. Uh, this section, these sections, however, usually in the outside, the outer areas of the dungeon, you'll need to um, make your way across these uh, lava geysers, and timing is the key to making it past them. So don't rush things head first um, too much, otherwise you will definitely pay for it in the end and have to climb all the way back up there. Again. This bird is really annoying, by the way. Oh, do you spoil item? I think you only need to give it to one person and one person only in the entire game. I mean, true, you can sell it to Tingle for some quick ch cash, but that's about it. So, not one of the most useful uh, spoils in the game, honestly. But... Oh, better stay back. Alrighty then. Proceed onwards, Great Justice. Was there a little bit of lag there? Huh. That's weird. And not only is settling across walls very useful in order to get past tight areas, doing this as well can also help. I don't think you can do this on Legends and other Zelda games either. Good lord, Wind Waker, why are you so unique? Ugh. That's what I love about you so much. Link is so freaking versatile, I swear. Alrighty. And uh, I don't know if anybody can hear it in the background or not, but I have a fan going on right now because I did make my way back to where I normally live just this, for this one weekend and to visit some uh, family and such. And uh, my room, my original room anyway, is really freaking hot for whatever reason, so. Mm. Just figured I'd share that in case if anybody was wondering why there's noise going on. Oh, hey. Link, have you seen any filthy thieving rats be around? I know they are annoying, but keep your wits about you. They are only rats. If you spread bait near their nest, they might share their store of treasure with you. Why don't you try it? Will do, Mr. Red King of Red Lion, sir. In fact, I think that's the first time he's done that with us, isn't it? I could be wrong. Delicious! Hey, I got something real good on Saltia, for real. What do it be for you? Well, I guess I can use a blue potion. Eh. I'll be getting a 
few more rupees later on, so it's not a it's not gonna kill me or anything. Besides, I think it's gonna be filling up t a little too soon, so I might want to take care of that now. Not that I'm gonna really need potions all that much in this game, aside from the savage labyrinth, but uh. I'm pretty good at this game, and I really don't need much of that, but I figured I'd burn a few rupees off anyway. I don't think, of it. I don't think that was the best idea ever, was it? Hmm. Anywho. I think this puzzle stumped me for a good bit, but what you need to do is light the torch here, and you gotta actually throw it over here in order to burn this uh, wood barrier off. And I do believe there is a key in that chest. I don't think of it. Keys aren't normally that far off from locked doors, are they? Or at least in this dungeon, anyway. We got the compass. Now you can see where things are hidden in the dungeon. Press the up button to view your map and see for yourself. And yeah, much um, like Link's Awakening and onwards, we can also see where chesses are, and we know where the bosses is where. Bleh, well, so. Yeah. Yep. And we can actually see where we're going on the top, I mean, bottom left corner of the screen, so that's always helpful. Though it's done death for quite a few games by now, but huh? yeah, nothing new. I guess I'm sort of just assuming people have not played when, I mean, Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask before coming to this, which I know is normally not the case, except for one of my friends, which is Matt LP Adventures. I think this was, this or uh, Link to the Past was the first Zelda game he, he played, so. So yeah. Cause I know there are some people who skipped it at 64, went to the PlayStation 1 instead, but then for whatever reason, went to the GameCube afterwards, so. Interesting analogy for the win. Anywho. In order to see what's going on in this room, or actually, this, the light is not, not all that bad. I guess it's because of how bright my TV screen or, is or something, but... Huh. No, because I remember when I used to play this on um, in the past on older TVs, I know I had a hard time trying to see what was in that um, passageway, so... Yay for good lighting, I suppose. But I'll show it off anyway, in case people have really poor quality TVs. <laughs> Or actually, we had to do that anyway, <laughs> with the flood. Go ahead and get that chest. I think there might have been something a little bit decent in that thing. And get, 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 there we go. Oh shoot, I forgot to put in the tingle tuner, didn't I? <laughs> Gosh darn it. Yeah, I completely forgot about the Tingles tuner. Because <laughs> I want to show off the chesses that you can get um, exclusive to, to the Tingle tuner only, so... It's going to be a hard feature to show off, in all honesty, because of the fact that, well... It's not like I can capture device that screen or anything. Though, I might find some footage or, or something and... Put it into the videos and the editing process a little bit later. So. Anywho, this... Right here is a warp pot, and what these warp pots do is that you jump into them, and they serve as shortcuts throughout the dungeon. We saw a green pot like this earlier at the entrance, and we can come back here and shortcut our way back into the other blue pot. There are a total of three pots in the entire dungeon, one that's close to the entrance, one that's midway, and one towards the boss. So. Yeah, I figured I'd go ahead and share that with you. Oh. So, yeah. Get out of here, son. Yeah, spin attack up the... 
do believe there is a bogo stick in here somewhere. Be careful there, because some bokoblins will actually jump out of the pots and try to surprise you, so. Go ahead and break all of these. I think we can get a decent amount of treasure out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Alrighty then. You know, now that I think of it, why did that rat give us a blue potion this early on in the game? We don't even have a magic meter yet. I like how he was crunched up in that position as soon as we got him out. Bye. Bye, son. Yay for his quick spin attacking. Okay, so what we need to do here is, to, in order to get pots that are on shelves down, we need to go into the wall that, that they're sported on. And they'll drop like that. How did I finish that one off faster than the other one? It made no sense at all. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and light this torch here. I do believe we'll get a key or a chest or something out of it. Well, not chest, but some amount of rupees out of it or something. I don't know. Well, actually, no. I think that's a treasure chart, actually. Yep, that is a treasure chart with the flood. Good thing I checked that then. <laughs> Alrighty. And I do believe once I uh, go into the next room, I will probably stop the recording there because that is a good stopping point if, if my mind remembers correctly. If the. Uh, the door right before, well not the door, but the room before the boss uh, room is just up ahead, so. Oh, suddenly door attended. Awesomeness. Nope, I was absolutely wrong. And I'm running low on time anyway, so I might as well stop the video. Right here, actually. So, next time, let's play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. We will, uh progressing more through Dragon Roost Cavern and hopefully finish it. So thank you guys for watching and see you guys then.